here's the other thing too. You you can always request mast. There are times when the request mast will be denied. That doesn't mean you can't request it because you can still fill out the same form. Do your thing. Do your thing. But it can be denied. For example, we're going to NJP you. You can't request mass for that. Why? Because in the order, it's going to tell you specifically there's already another avenue mm. of redress. In other words, there's an appeals process mm. for, an NJP. for an NJP. There's an appeals process for an ADCEP. There is, I don't think it's called an appeal, but like for a reenlistment. I'd have Marines try to request mass for a reenlistment. Oh, my reenlistment. There's something going on with it. Not like someone sitting on the package, but, and you, you know, you'd have to take the request mass. You'd still have to hear it. The CEO would still have to hear it, but it can be denied. But so you got to dig into in the order. your experience, though, how serious does CEOs take that or the request mass? Let's say a PFC or a Lance Corporal is trying to request mass. In your experience, how serious does their CEO really like read that piece of paper? Very. Really? 10 out of 10 times, yeah. Okay. Because what because will happen is now it's, I mean, you're half a step away from it, it being a, getting out of the command. You know, and you're you're gonna look bad on that one a lot of times. So they always take it seriously. A lot of a lot of what I've seen is cases where Marines they the problem I freaking have with the you guys out have these guys they don't know what it's for and they use it like their hand is hovering over it like it's the nuclear button. Okay. Nine times out of ten, dude, if you would just have the conversation, you could like get some some leeway. But you got some staff sergeant, some sergeant, some gunny in your way, right? And or some chief warrant officer or some young, it's it's the younger folks. It's those middle management folks. Okay. Most of the time, it's not, I'm not saying it's never the sergeant major because it definitely, there are times that it is, but, and you're always going to read it. So they'll request it when, and they don't really know how to use it and it'll get denied. And I'll tell them like, I, when I would get a Marine to request mass, I'd bring him in the office every single time. And he's seen it. I, I pull out the order. You're going to have not just the Marine Corps order, but you're going to have like a local command order, not to your battalion or your squadron, but it's going to be like at the regimental level or the group level and the wing and division and MLG. And it'll be a lot more verbatim and in depth than that Marine Corps order. The Marine Corps order is going to like kind of be closely aligned with the NAVMAC um, and it's like super general and broad. So that's one. But the other one is Marines would request mass. And this is why I would always try to help them. Because one mistake they would use or one mistake they would make is not using their chain of command. You still got to that, use that's the, the very first question. That you still got to use the chain of command because because in the order, it says I don't have to disclose the nature of the request to you. Marines think I don't have to tell, I don't tell you what I'm, why I'm going to see Sergeant Major. It's like, uh, no, you do have to tell me. Yeah. And in fact. I'm not going to let you go see him like that or whatever the case. Because that's one of the mi the most misconceptions. That's one of the first questions. In case you guys don't, I've requested mass in the past. And he's a sergeant major. So you know for a fact that he's seen a lot of, of, <laughs> of uh, cases. So one of the very first questions that they're going to ask you is that you afford your chain of authority or your chain of command, yeah. however you want to call it, the opportunity to resolve this issue. If the issue is, if the answer is no, they're going to be, well, go right back and talk to them that, first. That wasn't it, in my case. There's a lot of variables and it depends on the issue, but it's, well, but it, it depends. Cause though. he it, did not go through anybody to go. He went straight to battalion. But, but here's the thing though, based on, and, and again, I don't, which he right. can do, but he's got to still use the chain of command. Like I said, he didn't tell the chief, one, the chief one officer got blindsided, didn't know anything. Um, Which is wrong. Right. You know what I mean? And then obviously, I mean, to me, I didn't, I didn't care. Like, I'm like, no why one's going to get their head Why would you come off? to me if, if you're getting me? Like, I understood yeah. that part. You know, I was adult enough to understand that. But I'm like, yeah, it was boom, right to battalion. And it's like, so, I mean, if battalion in no way could say, were you aware? But, but I would but always let me, advise. Let me, let me address that though. Let me address that. And again, brother, I just, I just hope that you understand, right? That I'm talking to you based on my experiences right, right. and I'm talking to you very honest. I see that yeah. you're a very honest person. I expect you to call me out in my bullshit. <laughs> Which is weird because you guys are recruiters, but anyway. Yes. So I'm going to tell you this though. If based on the, er some of the earlier stuff that you said, right? If I see that in a section 
some of those things are allowed and are not stopped by the chief warrant officer. Because I'm going to tell you this. If I hear, me as a gunnery sergeant, if I hear one of my staff sergeants addressing the troops like that, you better trust and believe that me, I'm going to have a fucking conversation with that staff sergeant. Right. And I'm going to tell them, you don't talk to the Marines like that. I don't talk to the Marines like that. What gives you the right to talk to the Marines like that? Right. That's the very first thing I'm going to tell you. So I personally, I don't blame the sergeant for going directly to the battalion because if the chief warrant officer is allowing that type of that type of environment to happen in a section i wouldn't be feel comfortable in his abilities to actually resolve the issue so about that here's the other one is he had two requests mass against him once i left and never got and nothing and that was all swept under the rug by the battalion and that made whoa, me whoa, mad whoa whoa whoa, whoa. The, what the, do you mean swept under the rug the chief warrant officer because they they called where's me out this one. rug <laughs> i don't know where the rug is <laughs> but the chief warrant officer because i had my marines i had marines that had stayed there or whatever ones when i was still in hawaii and they're like staff sergeant like we request a mass and it's gone nowhere and i'm sitting there and i'm like wait if you guys are requesting mass on the same things that you request a mass with and now the staff sergeant is gone i'm i'm not good at math for marines but i'm beginning to see where the problem is you know what i mean i'm like maybe it's the fact that the staff sergeant was working in accordance to in a sense, what he was kind of being pushed by the person above him. But he was doing what the staff NCO should do, which is being the middleman. You know what I mean? Like, when you get a request mass, and I've seen people get in trouble for this, when you, when you get a request mass, in the order it talks about this, I actually have part of it pulled up right here. You need to stop what you're doing. What, what's the order? Can, can we, for, <clears throat> for purposes? Marine Corps 1700.23 Golf. This one was is dated 21 June 2019. It is current. Okay. So... Um, you know, basically all efforts to, you know, resolve the Marines issue, you're done. You are done. Even if you have good intentions, you're gunny, you know, so-and-so, and I come to you with a request mask, like that's too late. You can't go and let's say I disclose the nature of the request mask to you. You can't sit there and go, oh, dude, bull, we, I can help you with this. Like, you know, come on, whatever. Right. Let's look, we'll do this. This is it. It'll be done. Even if you help me. And even if the Marine says, all right, we're cool. You can still get NJP'd for that. You can get a 6105. You can become under negative, um, administrative, um, punitive, whatever action by the command. So you got to be careful, right? You still got to use the chain of command. And when it talks about disclosing the nature of the request or, you know, kind of like what you were saying earlier, it's the, it's commanders that have NJP authority. So, and not all commands have a company commander that has NJP authority. Um, but for those that do, it would be that company commander. Okay. Right. Now, so when I was level NJP, well, yeah, well, it, my just... point is when I was advising Marines, just like he said, okay. If my issue is, let's say it's, you're the company commander. My issue is with you. I'm not going to request mass to you. I don't have faith that you're going to fix a problem. So I'm going to request mass to the high, to a, the next higher level. But what do a lot of Marines want to do? Because we don't understand and it's the nuclear option. CG, commanding general, <laughs> Ted in general, you know, and it's like, and so I'm just like, guys, and to your point, I've seen it a million times. If I've seen it once, that CG, that regimental commander, their first question, let's say it's with the company commander or at the time, Staff Sergeant Spadden, you know, hey, uh, did you give your you know, company commander, a chance to solve this. Did you, and, and that, and that Colonel, he's going to ask old captain freaking Billy goat. Hey, did you even talk to this Marine? Did you try to do this? Like you can get, it, it, get, it can get ugly in there. All right. So, so there's that aspect of it as well. And then, you know, those questions are going to get asked, but like I said, yeah, you, you, um, it can be denied. And I have some of them right here, like in the order, it says request mass is not intended to be used for the purpose of harassment where the request mass has no merit or systematic issue able to be resolved by the commander or commanders, avoiding assigned duties or intentionally interfering with the commander's ability to carry out the functions and mission of the command. I'm going to request mass because I don't want to go to 20 on palms. Wrong. Okay. Once again, it'll be denied. It doesn't mean you cannot request mass. All right. Furthermore, request mass should not replace established staff functions, or supplant disclosure with the chain of command. A commander may deny request mast 
application if there is another specific avenue of redress available to the Marine, such as action to the UCMJ. Yeah. No, so to address that first part that you said, yeah. even though you cannot request mass just because um, you are, you don't want to go to 29 pounds, like, oh, I don't want to go to 29 pounds, so let me re request yeah. mass. There is actually another form that gets submitted to Headquarters Marine Corps to the monitor. It's called an AA form, Administrative Action Form. Yeah. Those forms are the actual way for you to, if you don't, if you, for whatever reason, let's say you're having some type of marital issues, let's say you're having your, your kid is going through the EFMP program, whatever it is, you can actually request an AA form. The request mass is not the actual form of you actually getting that address. So just to, just to that, and to, to go back with you, uh, uh, Rob, so you did what you did, obviously. I'm not a believer of holding things over Marines' heads. I hate that, right? right. You you already got the punishment that, that you got. Right. And obviously you transition out of the military. And what are you doing now that you are outside of the military? So uh, actually, two-part question. So how was that transition out of the military? And how are you doing now out that you are out of the military? Um, the transition has been rough. Um, I Why? still, I still hold a lot of, well, for me, it's like, I still hold a lot of bitterness on the way out, uh, for the simple fact of, you know, I enjoyed all my time up until the end and by going, just so you know, this guy was, a he was a very, um, high operating, high energy when he said, you know, his page, you know, motivated motivation <laughs> was spedding. Yeah. What <laughs> you see right now. That's him. 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, dude. I don't yeah. care if this guy had an hour of sleep, which happened at times. Yeah. But I mean, for me, it was like, you know, now I'm away from what I like to call is like the energy. Cause again, being on that Island, you know, cause I mean, You're today, an island boy. well, no, but I mean like today, you know, today being at Pendleton, <laughs> you know, I, I went boy. and hung out with, you know, Mr. Official cover grip. I'm here with you guys. I didn't have anybody down there. You know, so I'm I'm just kind of struggling, and then once you get you knocked felt down, like you kind of died on the vine. Well, yeah, and then when you get knocked down rank, some people just started to looking at that. You know, how could you say anything? How I mean, you start getting on a page, credibility is gone, right? People would start commenting. You know, it's like, oh, well, you did this, you did that. This is where it is, and it's like, really? I'm just like, I owned my mistakes. I said, yeah, hey, this yeah. is what I did. I go, what so I trust still, me when I know, speak from experience, and I'm telling you, you know, man, it, it, there's some people that just will not matter. Right. No. And I understood that, but that's, and I'm sorry though. That, oh that, no. And I mean, the reason why I understand that is because that's been another thing is, so that'd be another one. There was times where like I would get on a live with him. Then all of a sudden I get a lot of people and they're like, well, you're not helping yourself any more than you already thought you were mm -hmm. because now you're trying to align with him. And I'm sitting there and I go, look, I don't care because here's, here's what I would tell anybody right now. And this is what I think is a, the most important lesson. And we'll cover it later when we discuss the unaliving part. Here's my thing about him. I don't really care what he did. I have what I like to call a mafia mentality. Okay. This guy, at, he He's was at a corporal's. Black. He was at a corporal's graduation, corporal's course graduation, because I was attending. Because it was one of my pulleys was graduating from corporal's course, okay. and so he's behind me, and I have my ex-wife there, and uh, we turn around because he sees me. But y'all were married at the time. Yep. And he looks at her and he says, "How do you feel about him going on his back-to-back -back deployment?" The only, only senior leader who ever asked my wife how she felt about me going on the back-to-back -back deployment. So to me, I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Outside of murdering or doing something else, I'm like, I'm loyal to the guy. Yeah. I don't care what he did. I don't care. Again, that's why I say it's a mafia mentality because it's like, we're all human at the end of the day. We're all going to make mistakes. But I go, that guy, he didn't have to. He didn't have to ask her. Yeah, he could have just been like, hey, what's up, Staff Sergeant Sveden? Yo, what's up, bro? And just kept it walking, being doing you know first sergeant things. So but he took time to ask her, so... I lost all that when I got out because my my inbox became very empty. People that said that they would always be there for me. And then I went to recover mm. by living with my parents. And I'm in a town of Mineral, Virginia, which is 500 mm. people. Yeah. Um, so I'm an energy guy and I'm not around any any energy. And because I, I show my videos and stuff, people assume. I'm like, oh, motivation was spent and he's good. Like, look at And I'm like, I mean, are you going to watch my videos if I sit there not bringing it? But yeah. it's a lot harder when you don't have the fuel. Dude, I forgot. No. I didn't even. I didn't even remember that, bro. So trust me, I did. <laughs> so it was. It was obviously the transition has been rough. You you got out last year. Yeah. Last year, okay. So and what are you doing now? I'm currently doing land surveying, just because. Um, I mean, I don't. I I don't see myself having a real job down the road. I want to get into like social media marketing. Honestly, what's weird is one of the dreams I'd really love to have, and we're gonna probably discuss that hopefully later, is Mickrick. Where are you at? 
I would love to get involved in the recruiting process. Um, I used to coach youth basketball, youth football, uh, again, being the recruiter of the year. I, I feel like I have I ideas um, where I would love to be can able I to Can I tell you yeah, something? Go for it. A lot of leaders, I talk to a lot of leaders about this. I mean, you lose your way because did you hear what he was just saying? Coaching, right? We, we're talking about adding value. You're talking about adding value to people. That's what leaders do. Yeah. That's what good leaders do. You add what's value. You make them think, you motivate them, you inspire them, you make them laugh, you're teaching them stuff. That's value. So if you're if you guys are watching this, and I know we've talked about this before. If you if there's veteran employment opportunities, go. Comment, stitch it, remix it, whatever it is. Um, because there's there's not enough out there. And and I deal with this. I, I mentor a lot of actually a lot of sergeants majors from the army. And I just had this conversation the other day because leaders will lose their way. And adding value to people, it's not for everybody, but just you know, I don't know. Think about the satisfaction that you get or got from, you know, I mean, dude, you went to your, you just said you went to a corporal school graduation from one of your police. Nobody was patting your back for that. No, that, actually I had to, I had to fight, I had to fight my master. Arm. He's like, you're doing what? And I'm like, no, I'm going to be there for my Marines. I will always be there for my Marines. It's a promise I yeah. gave them, you know, and, and that's, and that's the reason why I felt bad on how it went down in Hawaii because at the end of the day, I mean, I did, I ended up, uh, I was out here in Cali last year and I called the kid up that led the charge on the whole thing. And at first I could tell he was nervous to talk to me and I'm like, it is what it is, man. Yeah. It, is, it is what it is. And I go, I can't, I go, you're doing whatever you're doing in your life. I go the other Marine. He's now on MSG duty. The other Marine is now in the Navy. I go, you guys are doing your thing. It is what it is. I go, I'm not going to hold a grudge. Because where does that help me at? Okay, so you you said you had a rough transition. Have you ever been so down you were contemplating on a lot of yourself? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Why yeah. do you say you say it like without hesitation? Um, because how so, many times? One time or like have you like thought of a plan? Like how did you get there? What was talking there? No, um, I don't know. It's kind of like difficult where it's like I mean sometimes you just have moments. Um, Hell, I even had it like on this road trip, um, just coming out here and being like, you know what? Why don't I just call Cali the end? Because that, I mean, I stepped on the yellow footprints out here. Um, my best years with my ex-wife was out here, you know, just put it up in a little bow and, and call it good. But that's the other reason why I said, you know what? I'm also going to get out here and get back to my page, get back to my page and get hungry for it. And hopefully I start getting an audience and getting out of there. Because the other thing is, is, I mean, that's why when I was saying calling these people out, the motivated gunny, whatever her name is, um, you know, or there's um, Meech Speaks and some other people, you know, I've reached out to them and I said, hey, man, I do social media. I get I only got 790 followers. And that's and why I'm going to I'm going to tell you right now. That's why if it would have been a, if it would have been a, a Sergeant Major Bull, you know, a Barry Bull out there, or if it would have been, you know, a Master Sergeant Stanek, you know, the, the, the 1169 Pogue or whatever doing the reaching out to them, that would have been like, oh, yeah, sure. I would love your mentorship because they they equate uh, a success to the amount of followers that you got. In a way, you can't blame them because it's almost like the military. Your rank lends you a certain amount of credibility. Not all of it. I've looked up to people that are lower ranked than me. But see, I, I have too. See, I'm with you, but that's that's not everybody though. I'm not looking at it like that. I'm not mad at the followers saying what I, the re, my whole point was I was trying to explain to them is like this relationship right here. And then like today when me and him were talking on the phone and he's like, you know, you know, cover grip. And I'm like, we were deployed. I go, I didn't get out there slinging names when I was online. You know, I wasn't yeah. like, Hey, I dropping well, name dropping. So when I'm out there reaching out to these people now, I was like, okay, now I'm going to get in front of the bigger names and yeah. be like, Hey, so but when you, you get on a page, together, you're a staff and CEO, you know, you're so depressed and you're having these thoughts and you're still having them. Where kind of sort where, where you, you feel, do you feel you're, you're, you're getting better, but you're not, 
you know, where you want to be? Do you feel like you're, you're at your lowest or I'm, I'm not at my lowest. Um, when you were at your lowest, had you like developed a plan to unalive yourself? No. Cause I, I guess t- when I looked at it as, um, for my part is I knew if I was ever going to do it, I would have to just do it. And that's kind of, in a sense, how my whole life has been anyway. Like when I joined yeah. the Marine Corps, it was kind of a, let's just go do this. Um, when got involved with my wife, it was like the very first date we had, I said, I'm all in. Who do Anything you have? Then, do you have kids? You know, no, no kids. Okay. So I, you're not married. My parents. No. my parents, my little brother, and then like my best friend from high school. And then I do have so a couple I, people I want, that I want you guys to hear what this, what, what Rob is saying, man. I want you guys to listen to this. Yeah. This guy has had everything taken from him. I want you to think about if you don't think about any freaking thing else, you think about this one freaking story about how it was absolutely not swept under the rug. This guy got sent packing right back to where he started mm-hmm. in Middletown, freaking Virginia, with 500 people, like he said, to his parents. 17 years, and you might you may hear that and go, "Good, he got what he deserved." Well, I don't feel that way. I don't know what people deserve because I ain't judge, jury, or executioner. But I thank you for being here. I'm gonna tell you that, man. It means a lot to me. So. Yeah, yeah.